This one's for JJ. Uh, this is from Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and welcome to the conclusion of this series that I had a little bit of hope for, and a lot of you got me excited for it because I didn't even know this was announced way back when, you know, back in January, whenever it was announced. Uh, you all brought that to my attention, and I was like, okay, you know, Michelini coming back, that could be good. It could be like one of these Symbiote Spider-Man series where Peter David came back and is like revisiting that timeline and stuff. But I feel like Michelini's version has been very rocky, uh, very inconsistent, and uh, overall kind of met what I thought and expected from this series. Uh, I did expect a little bit more, though, to be honest with you. Um, the timeline stuff was kind of one of my big pet peeves in the beginning. But even looking past that, just the pacing of this story has been a mess. You know, jumping from and Wang stuff to Life Foundation stuff to all these things to making him fireproof to now he's not fireproof. Like... It's just, it's been a colossal mess, very unfocused. Um, and I, I don't know if they're just doing this old school Marvel style where David Michelini has wrote an outline, gave it to the artist. The artist just went crazy and drew, you know, whatever he wanted, which is Yvonne Fiorelli, who is the artist, who I think does a great job art-wise, but pacing-wise, this story is just a mess. And if Yvonne uh, or Ivan is, is the reason for, um, you know, that pacing, I would say maybe rein them in a little bit next time in the book. Or if they're just, they got a detailed script and they just followed the script, then I'd say rein David Michelini in more next time. Because this is, uh, I don't know, man, it, it just feels really jumbled. And this one, this final part is called Hammers Hammers, uh, because that's what he decided to call this team of uh, villains that he hired. He's on some island in the Caribbean and he's hanging out. We saw that in the last issue where he's like, if Venom comes, just let him in. And then, boom, Venom bursts in, and he's like, is anybody home? You know, which I thought was a good, fun, cheesy 90s line. Uh, but then it it jumps around. Like, even this issue can't even tell, like, a, a semi-linear story. It's like, all right, 20, uh, 20 minutes ago, Venom did this, and he meets some rebels. And then it's like, okay, 45 minutes ago, he fights Taskmaster. So when the book starts, he's already beaten everybody up and gotten to Justin Hammer and is having a face-to-face -face with him. And then it keeps cutting back to the battles. And I'm just like... Uh, I don't know why they did that. Like, I understand that as like a writing technique and, and even as a trope on some level uh, in some ways, but I just don't like the execution of it in this book. I was just like, okay, well, maybe we'll at least get like this cool, you know, five, six page fight scene between Venom and all these villains and he's working his way to Hammer and it's building tension as he's like getting closer and closer. And we know Venom's going to survive. We know he's going to get through it because this is set in the past. But still, like they, they really took the, a little bit of oomph that, you know, because he could have still lost this fight. Like, he could have still been put down by Hammer, um, and then they could pick that thread up currently in the current comics and be like, oh, Venom, you know, be like, oh, you know what? I never did go back and settle the score with Justin Hammer. So you could actually have that pay off in modern day, but this book just does a bad job of even trying to set up anything like that, too, if that's what they were doing, and I don't, I don't think they were. So, you know, he meets these rebels, and they, they, you know, become allies, and then it cuts back to Venom, you know, working his way through Hammer's you know, house, like, uh, which is, you know, has weapons and stuff all over it. And then it cuts back to 45 minutes ago and he's outside with a rocket launcher fighting, you know, Taskmaster and everybody. And it's like, okay, these are kind of like the rocket launcher scene was really fun, but it's like, these, there's these fun moments in there that really I thought are fine on their own. But then when you start looking at them as a, a paced story and, and how it all comes together, I mean, this book was a meth, I mean, a mess, uh, not a meth, I, I don't know, maybe meth head-ish, uh, the way it's written, um, but, uh, but you know, you have, like, it's just very all over the place. The book started by setting up a potential connection with Venom and the Life Foundation, and then they just abandon that, and then they go, okay, well, we're going to do this Anne Wang story with her and her fiancé, and then they, they get rid of that pretty quickly, and then Eddie comes back to the Lady at Life Foundation and just kills her off screen, so that story's over. Uh, then the Anne story's over. She's like, she yells at Eddie and she goes, I hate you, but I also understand why you did it. Maybe the guy's a bad guy, but whatever. You know, you're ruining my life. Stay away from me. And, but I may, maybe I still love you one day. And it's just like, it's such back and forth, inconsistent. Like they don't remember what they did the page before, before they write the next page kind of scenario. It's like very Paul W.S. Anderson in a way where it's like, forget the last Resident Evil movie, but here's the new one. But we're going to make references to the last one, but they're not going to really connect because if you think about the connection we're making, it's going to, they're going to retcon each other or whatever. It's like, yeah. So, uh, 
so you know and then you have all these like constrictor and and uh, all these villains uh, frogman people that venom has never really fought before and i was like okay maybe that's ultimately the point of this series is him versus hydro man him versus taskmaster you know him versus well he fought sticks and stone before but bringing that back um and i thought they would do more with that even if the series was just that i would have had more fun with it than the way this was all structured uh, to be um and then all the battles are just you know there's no clever way that venom really beats anybody he just like when the battle needs to end they're like okay we got three panels left we got to end this battle he just webs somebody or just punches them and it like battles over and uh, and then taskmaster runs away and you're just like uh, okay <laughs> like all right i would have just loved a toe-to-toe -to -toe with venom and taskmaster because i think they could do really well toe-to-toe -to -toe. and in this one they just like taskmaster's like wait the 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 bounty is off limits like justin hammer receded the offer okay well then i'm out of here and i'm like mm, okay i again it feels like they had to wrap up the fight so they could get to the story uh, and then uh, and then they get to the story and it's just a waste of paper in a lot of ways I, except for the good art I like the artwork but man oh man is this this book was such a mess and yeah and then Venom has a moment at the end where he's being lit on fire and he's trying to resist it um, which I'm like okay I guess he's not the the formula didn't work so he is you know vulnerable to fire but all that story it just doesn't make it like it, it added to nothing you know that's the thing is like they Michelini is like oh I'm gonna go back and do this and show a time where he was fireproof and all the and it's just like it doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't really matter because there's no big overcoming of anything for Venom uh, even the scene at the end when he's on fire and he's pushing himself it's like we've seen him do that before and it wasn't like it didn't feel like a big moment it felt like a rushed way again to end the scene and then it just you know he walks off and he's on an uh, you know on the island Every, the building ex exploded behind him and he sees a cruise ship out in the water and he's like all right time to go back to new york i think i've learned a lesson about love or whatever and maybe i can go back to new york and and maybe still f settle the fight spider-man in some way um and uh, and deal with that but also maybe try to have a little bit more of a heroic side you know Anne was right about something and, and the guy who died in the alley like it's michelini trying to make everything make sense and make some kind of change for eddie but really, the change for Eddie already came in the Michelini Amazing Spider-Man run when in 374 and 375, you know, he went and kidnapped Peter's parents thinking he was saving them from Spider-Man because everything Peter touches, you know, dies, you know, Gwen Stacy, everything like that. And so and uh, and Harry Osborn. So Eddie's like, I'm saving your parents, you know, in his warped way. But then the jury show up and or a Silver Sable, I think, and her crew show up, too. Um, and then they get in a big battle and ultimately Spider-Man saves Anne Wang. And that's what caused him to turn and give Spider-Man a chance. And I'm like, okay, so you already had that story where he finds some kind of enlightenment in a way or, or turns, a, you know, says, okay, I'm not going to kill Spider-Man. You already kind of had that. And that, this moment wasn't exactly that, but it felt like a, okay, now he can go and do that story. But he leaves from here, theoretically, to go and kidnap Peter Parker's parents. So it's not like he's doing the right thing, really. He's still broken. So I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I didn't really see the point of the story. And once again, they established that this definitely takes place after Spider-Man 315 because he, he mentions, um, you know, the uh, the guy from the Life Foundation, or not Life Foundation, uh, the, the the raft or the vault. Um, the, the Orwell or whatever his name was, his son was killed by Venom when he escaped in Amazing Spider-Man 315, I think it was. And, uh, and so that guy is the one who put the bounty on Venom's head. But you never get a face-to-face -face confrontation with them because obviously that happens in Lethal Protector later on. So, um, but... I don't know. It's just like, oh, that would have been a cool thing to play off that more. So why use Justin Hammer? Why not just use the Orwell guy and, and, and you know, have him get away at the end or something? I don't know. It's just, and I think that's his name. I could be mistaken. But it, it felt like Michelini was, had an idea of how to connect this to the past and, and make it work on some level. But somewhere along the lines, it just fell apart. Uh, you know, not paced well, um, not structured well, um, drawn pretty well but uh but nothing more than that so and a few moments here and there like each issue i thought had at least one moment that i was like oh that's kind of cool but in a very like like silly way like superficial way where it's like oh cool venom versus taskmaster but then it you know then that wasn't even a cool fight so i'm like oh, okay whatever so thanks for <laughs> it's this blue balls of the series they should have called this venom blue balls uh because that's what it was it felt like a, a hint at a bunch of cool things and then never delivering <laughs> so you never get the payoff so you're just like 
each issue you just put the book down just with you know just have icy blue balls <laughs> that's the best way sorry that's the best way i think i can describe this series so um so what did you think of venom blue balls uh, number five i would say this is just as bad as the fourth issue i thought the first one was fun second one started you know started to wane a little bit third issue was starting to lose me fourth issue definitely lost me and this issue definitely lost me so they did not stick the landing on this they made it a a, a very disjointed series i feel and I really hope they don't do another one. I hope this book, you know, just whether it's sold well or not, I hope they don't do another one like this. Uh, no more Michelini stories set in the past. Please, I just, I don't want any more of this. And if you do release it, I mean, fine, release it. I'm just, I'm not going to buy it or review it. <laughs> I'm going to just, it sucks because like I'm the Venom vlog and I don't really like, I don't want to talk about the new series. Um, although some of you have told me it's getting a little better. So maybe in trade at some point when the third movie comes out, maybe we'll go back and check them out. Um, but it sucks because right now there's not a lot for me to read other than Savage Avengers, uh, which I'll do a, uh, a review of once the first arc is done with Anti-Venom. And then Carnage, I might pick up that trade and we can talk about the Carnage series because um, I've heard of, of, uh, some mixed things about it. But, you know, I, I, it just sucks. There's not a lot of modern comics, but there's still some old comics we got to get through. So we'll dive back into those very, very soon. And we'll be talking about some Spider-Verse characters because I loved Into the Spider-Verse. And with Across the Spider-Verse coming out, there's a lot of Spider-Man 2099 stuff coming out, voiced by Oscar Isaac, who, as for, you know, for Moon Knight and everything, I'm a big fan of. So you will probably see some Spider-Man 2099 stuff on this show, Venom Vlog, as well. Because we've already covered him before, because he fought Venom before. Um, but now I want to get into who Miguel O'Hara is and talk a little bit about his backstory as we, you know, gear up for this new movie coming out, Across the Spider-Verse. So we will have some things to talk about that are newer, that'll keep us going. Um, but then we'll also dive back into the past and talk about older things as well. So let me know what you think of this issue of this whole series, Venom Blue Balls. Let me know your thoughts down below and, uh, and we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll have more episodes to you very soon. See you in the future. Peace.